As hydrogen piles on, the central region grows more and more dense until something brand new lights up the universe, a star. These first stars are hydrogen giants, 100 times or more larger than our own sun. Such massive stars are short-lived, two or three million years at the most, and they go out with a bang. In explosions so big, they've been dubbed hypernovae. And it's with these cataclysms that the universe begins to accumulate the building blocks of life. All the atoms in the universe heavier than hydrogen and helium are forged by stars. Stars are really interesting. They, they don't just sit there. They know, uh, they, because they last so much longer than we do, we think they're, they're permanent. Stars are the ultimate alchemists. They, they turn light elements into heavier ones. They get the energy that they need to glow that way. The star begins its life made out of hydrogen and helium mostly, about 70% hydrogen, 28% helium in the case of the sun. In a star's core, the temperature and pressure are so high that hydrogen atoms fuse together to make helium. Hydrogen fusion releases prodigious amounts of energy, the heat and light of a star. That's the story for 90% of the life of a star, fusing hydrogen uh, to make helium. Eventually, though, the star runs out of hydrogen and begins to fuse its stocks of helium, making yet heavier elements. And so the way it works, and it always works this way, is that it contracts and it gets hotter. And if it can find something new to burn, whether it's the kitchen sink or coal or whatever, it'll burn it. Helium is taken three at a time to make carbon. You can add one more helium to that carbon and make element number eight, oxygen. That's a tremendous step forward. You get carbon and nitrogen and oxygen uh, made in stars. Now this is great because on the board we already have the principal elements of life. Organic chemistry is the chemistry uh, of carbon. Carbon fuses next, and still heavier elements begin to form. Sulfur, argon, chlorine, potassium, calcium, scandium. The pace of this gets faster and faster. Back in the middle, silicon is starting to burn at three and a half billion degrees. It's tremendous temperature. It makes titanium, vanadium, chromium. Manganese, cobalt, nickel, and iron. Iron is really the end of the road. It's, it's sort of the nuclear turnip out of which you just cannot squeeze uh, anymore. It's the end of the game. A star that has relied on fusion has come to the point where it has nothing more to spin. The star is suddenly caught in a disaster. There's radiation going out from the outside, but deep in the inside, there's uh, no more fuel. Iron can't fuel the stellar furnace. And so, when a star builds up too much iron, it dies. The core collapses, it bounces. And it begins to move out, first slowly and then faster and faster. And that sends a very sharp wave back out through the star. And now what was falling down is going out, the whole thing's blowing up. And you've made a supernova. A supernova explosion can be as bright as four billion stars like the sun. A stupendous explosion. Such outrageous energies overcome the iron barrier cooking atoms into all the rest of the elements on the periodic table. So starting down here, you can go copper, zinc, gallium, germanium, arsenic, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, technetium, rhodium, antimonium, thorium, iodine, xenon, cesium, barium, lapidum, cerium, antinium, thorium, protactinium, uranium. Done. <laughs> That's enough elements. <laughs> we are all stardust carbon in our bodies, the iron in our blood, the calcium in our bones. Every last atom was formed in a star. But it's not that simple. No one star can produce more than just a dusting of heavy elements. So, to create an environment friendly to life, the universe had to find a way to concentrate the good stuff. Which it did in a process that is remarkably like the way Chef Michael Romano cooks up a bowl of soup. 